Hi there, this is Andrea. Let me see if I can get a better lighting. Maybe not. Oh. <laughs> Hello, we're live. And, oh. okay, I'm gonna leave it. It's not the best, but we are live and this is the way that I really, really am. Uh, I'm Andrea with Catch the Fire Worship Flags and this is the weekly your place for worship encouragement to help you elevate your praise to the next level. So I missed last week and thank you so much for your prayers. Uh, if you can, you might be able to hear it still. I'm really quite nasally. I had a pretty bad cold. Actually, I missed, not only did I miss the weekly, but I missed our book club. So thank you, Carianna Alum, for hosting that. That was fantastic. And thanks, Jennifer. I missed you guys too. It So September, or when, if you have little kids, September is kind of usually that month where people get sick quite often because kids are just full of germs. But I have a kid in grade 12, so I don't even know how I got so sick. And anyway, I'm back to normal. My nasal, still a bit nasally, uh, but that's okay. Uh, I'm still been working, just working slow. And I don't have a big list, partly because I didn't ask Rosie what I needed to talk about and what we were discussing, but there's a couple of things that I wanted to share, that are on my heart that I wanted to share. And uh, and I know that there was a question that I forgot. So so if you have a question, feel free to, to write it in the comments and I'll try to get to it. Um, but before your weekly encouragement, I have had something that the Lord has been teaching me for the last week. And I wanna share with you again, this is what you, what happens when you mess up, when you don't hear God or you ignore what he has to say, or you run ahead, or you lag behind and you don't, you're not in sync with God's timing. And I'm pretty sure that this has happened to all of you. It's happened to me this just this week. Um, actually, not just this week. I'm I'm in the I'm in the final stages of of what I've done, and I messed up. I I don't tend to actually lag behind God. If I'm going to do anything, I'm always going to run ahead. And my heart was set on something so much that I was really ignoring what God was truly saying to me. And oh yeah, thanks. I'll get to that question. Where should we be focused on this? Yeah. So sorry, I was distracted. What Rosie had said something to me. Thanks, Rosie. Um, no, when you've when I messed up. I really did. I ran ahead of God. I said I agreed to do something that I might not have, shouldn't have done. And so now, so now what? Now the enemy, it, it leaves such a gaping hole for the enemy to come in and really mess with my head. And I'm sure that this has happened to you. It messes with your head. He says that you don't listen, uh, that you've never heard God, that you're not prophetic, that uh, you're selfish, that you're prideful. These are the things that he says to me. Maybe he says different things to you. These are the areas of, of that the enemy really, really taunts me. And I have a really, sometimes I have a really hard time listening to those, to not listening to those. And so I was reminded again of what happens when you mess up, because we all do. But our God is so good. He's a, he's a good daddy. And um, I know that when my son messes up and he frustrates me and he is disappointed, you know, does disappointing things. I don't hold him forever in that sin. I don't hold him accountable forever for the thing that he messed up. We deal with it and sometimes there's repercussions. Sometimes there's natural consequences that have to actually be worked out. But that never, that doesn't negate the fact that he's my son. It doesn't negate the fact that he has um, a purpose in our family, that he has things that he's supposed to do and accomplishments that he's supposed to uh, carry through. It doesn't forfeit any of those things. Maybe there's a delay, uh, but it doesn't forfeit any of those things. So I wanna encourage you, if you've been like me this week that that have rushed ahead or not gone before, that you, you literally did not listen to the Lord. I, I was in complete disobedience. I, I'm being very honest. I'm confessing to you. I was in disobedience, and um, but here I am. So the Lord's been maybe. I've had a lot of time in my in my 
sickness to reflect on this. And so I just wanted to share something from Joshua 9 and 10. I love this story because this is now Joshua is taking over. Uh, he's taken over for Moses and they're going into the promised land. And he makes, in chapter 9, it says he makes a treaty with the Gibeonites. I'm not going to read the whole thing. There's a couple of par passages that I do want to read specifically. Uh, but just the background story is that they had been making a lot of progress in the land. They had been really scaring their enemies about the ter territory that they were taking. And the Hivites, also the Gibeonites and the Hivites, those are the same group of people, just... Uh, an FYI as I read this, that they were afraid of what they had been doing. So they, the inhabitants of Gibe Gideon, Gibeon sorry, heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and I, and they worked craftily. So in a ruse, they went and pretended to be ambassadors. They took on old so sacks of their donkeys, old wineskins, torn and mended, old and patched sandals on their feet, and old garments on themselves, and all the bread their, of their provision was dry and moldy. Then they went to Joshua to the camp of Gil at Gilgal and said to him, We've come from a far country and therefore make a covenant with us. I'm going to switch over to verse 14 where it says, Then the men of Israel took some of their provisions, but they did not ask counsel of the Lord. So Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them to let them live and the rulers of the congregation swore to them. And so all is lost. You think, now what? He's actually made a covenant and you know that our God is a God of covenant. So here's their leader and God has told them to take over the promised land that they needed to wipe out all of the people. And this, they made a covenant under a ruse in some so i'm reading the uh, king james new king james version in some of the translations it's under uh, a guise or a ruse or um, by manipulation they made a, a truce by manipulation some of the translations however you, it was not it was not a, a legal transaction and yet god is such a god of covenant that he actually will not deny a covenant and so it just kind of tells you a little bit more about our, our, the God that we serve and the God that's in, in, in covenant with us and he makes a covenant with us. He really, he honors that. There's nothing about that covenant that he will deny himself because he is faithful. He's faithful to his promises. So now, just kind of fast forward, I'm not going to read the whole story, but the whole, then, then they've, so they've made this covenant they realized that they had been tricked. There is some uh, restitution that, that God does com command of them that they are now servants of the Israelites. Um, but yet they get to live um, so that they are a thorn actually in the side of the Israelites. So there's some consequence happening. Um, and now the Okay, so we have all this. So I, I don't, it doesn't actually say what Joshua did in the, that repentance part. And I'm kind of, that's where I'm in at this moment is that repentance. But there is such, there's so much um, beautiful relationship happening here. So, so he's not discounting the fact that this was made out of a ruse. God still honors the, co the covenant. And so in, in chapter 10, I'm not even going to, I'm not going to even read it, uh, but in chapter 10, now the enemies uh, in the rest of the, the nations in the promised land are wa waging war against the Gi Gibeonites, the Hivites. And so they call to Israel saying, hey, you're our covenant partners. It is actually your covenantal duty to come and fight with us. And so the, the people of Israel, it says, they said it says that they marched all night mm -hmm. so it cost them so they marched all night they're tired they're probably cranky they didn't want to go to war this wasn't a war that they wanted to be in this wasn't even a war that the that God had asked them originally to mm -hmm. be in and so here they're going to fight and this is the great the famous story and I'm sure you remember this if you don't remember the entire story you remember this part that 
the sun stood still for Joshua, that they were fighting and they weren't, their enemy had, wasn't quite defeated, but God did promise them the victory. He promised them the victory and then he stopped time for them. And so this is so encouraging. This is so encouraging. If you have messed up, if you have not inquired of God and you have gone ahead and done something, God does not keep you in that. This is that, that's a, that's a, it's a sin. It's sin to step outside of God's will. And yet that's what Jesus died for. That we are still, he sees us, Hebrews 10, 14 says that by Christ's sacrifice, one sacrifice, we are made perfect forever, those who are being made holy. So what I'm saying is that he doesn't actually even see that. He just honors the things that we honor. It says when those that you forgive, he forgives those that you deny, he denies. That's part of being a covenantal partner. And I don't want to be preaching and stuff, but this is, it's been very important for me to remember this. And I think that that's a word for you. I think someone else needs to hear that. When you mess up, God does not hold it against you. You are not forever punished. That God actually will continue to come to your rescue and that will give you victory in the things. Maybe some of the consequences, you still get the victory even in the consequences. Um, and that's our God. And so nothing more than that. Uh, I think that that's an important message. Uh, I wanted to also let you know about the what's trending. So Jennifer Bennett is, uh, she's very active on our page and in our group. I think that she probably is going to be owning all of the flags pretty soon. But I love what Jennifer, I said to Jennifer earlier this week that she really has a very good pulse of what's going on. So if you want to know what, what God's doing, you should ask Jennifer what flag she's buying because she inevitably always buys uh, contributes to the flag. <laughs> yeah, you are working. She contributes to the trending, to the trending topic. And so Imago Deo, uh, in his image, that is our number one trending, uh, trending flag as well as Shekinah glory. But I love, I love how the Lord has actually described Imago Deo, that you are created in God, by God, and for God, so that you are the picture of God in a world that needs God. And that's what that, that's what that flag is, that you are created by God, for God, and in God, so that you are the picture of God in a world that needs God. So that's our number one training, and I love that because what is that saying? God is actually creating us to be lights all over the place that we are. We influence where we go, and so each one of us are in different areas, we're in different countries. That's phenomenal, uh, and so well done. Um, if if that's on your heart. Don't delay. This collection has been spectacular. I love the Identity Collection. Uh, that's going to be available until November or. October 31st so you have a little bit more than a month and then the question I need to just scroll back the question um, where should we where should our focus be when we're on display and when people are watching us this was one of the early questions yeah it's such a great question and it really it really is the because as soon as as soon as you take your focus off of the Lord so this is what I, I'm going to answer this question, and I'm going to I'm going to relay it back to Peter and the in in the boat that they were Peter was in the boat with the disciples, they were doing their own thing, and so imagine this is your dance ministry. You you can you can actually be operating uh, in the things that you're you're strong in. So if it's dance, you can actually be operating in your dance, and Jesus comes on the wall, walking on the water. He comes by them and he and the scripture actually says that he would have passed by had they not called out to him. And so we have to actually our eyes have to be so full of Jesus and you have to be able to see him. So you could actually be operating in your ministry. You could be you could be working in the job that you and completely miss Jesus in it. It might even be your, your destiny, it might even be your purpose, but you could completely miss Jesus in it. So we a first of have to have eyes to see. So being on display, we're on we're in our ministry. We're working in the ministry of, of the, that the Lord has given us. And then and then it said Peter says, Lord if that's you 
let me come to you call me and Jesus says come and so he got out of the boat and he walked on water this is such a famous famous um, passage and and we we really do go into well he fell but really he walked on water Peter walked on water and this is when we are with the Lord when our eyes are so focused on Jesus that everything else falls away that um, the only thing we have is and that we tr we elevate we elevate our praise when you want to elevate your praise you want catch the fires all about helping you not just putting a flag in your hand but understanding what it is that is elevating your praise it is not the flag itself it's really it's still always about the inner person um, there's there's anointing on the flags I mean there's a, there's another that's another teacher teaching for another day um, but it's really your eyes have to be on Jesus and then as soon as they were off Jesus then then he started to sink and so what that looks like in terms of our dance ministry and what you're looking at that you especially if you're part of a dance team and you're not the one um, doing preparing the dance or doing the choreography for the dance um, it's easy just to not even notice Jesus it's easy just to be in the boat and be part of the ministry team and so say you're just dancing if you're not watching Jesus you will sink it will become completely about you and not about Jesus and so what's your practice 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 discerning Jesus practice 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 discerning his voice practice 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 in just in private I always say that you have to be a private worshiper before you are a public worshiper and one part of my testimony if uh, I've shared it in different times maybe I haven't shared it for a while but part of my testimony is that when the Lord drew me into using worship flags I actually used them for about six months three or four times a week with nobody present and I learned so much about the Lord I've learned about following him and it wasn't I wasn't actually in in public with the flags until Rosie in so you kind of know the story about how we met. She invited me to her church, or to Leavenworth. She invited me to her church and to, to do a performance, actually. And that was the very, very first time that I had been in public with my flags. I don't know if you even knew that, Rosie. But I could step into that. Um, and even though I was on display, I was not... Um, it, it did, uh, my eyes were not on the people who were watching me. My eyes were on Jesus to see what he was doing. And so, I mean, it's just, it, there's no other, there's no other, there's no trick to it. It is being so in love with Jesus that that's all you see. And so you want to be, you want to worship, worship, work it all out, you know, outside if you live. I mean, we're, now we're coming into the fall, so it's going to be a little bit less easy for me to be outside and worship outside. So probably won't worship quite as much, maybe. Um... So if that's if that's your situation, like just physically you can't do it, uh, just be in the Word, be in the Word, be with Jesus, get your eyes so focused on Him that when He says, come, dance, come dance with me, that your eyes are just on Him. So that's it for the weekly. Uh, thanks for your question. If you would like me to answer your question on the weekly, I'd really love to do that. We can have this conversation. I don't know. Is there any actually other questions? Um, thank you so much. Thanks for the Tessa Caitlin. And uh, I really, really just love you guys. Uh, have a great week. If you are not in the Firecatchers group, on the, it's our Facebook group. I invite you to join us. I'll post the link. A couple more things are coming up, which I can't even think about. I, I may or may not be going to Atlanta tomorrow. I'm not sure. Um, and uh, so I might be around not uh, that's no, I'm just rambling I'm just gonna shut up now okay I love you guys we'll see you in the group bye